be waiting for the user to pull the trigger and trigger pulled and now we're waiting for the user to let go of the trigger so again and when we let go this is going to kind of shift and uh, we'll look at that a little bit more here so the first thing we'll do is we're going to move all these other parts aside so we can set everything down we are going to take the actual trigger and we're going to dump it into the bottom here like so and need to make sure everything lines up got to jiggle the things around and the goal is that you see through that hole right there so we'll basically take our pen and we'll insert it and then we'll move everything around until it fits so it can be acquired we got the first part in now because we have the first part we can kind of let go a little but you'll notice this guy needs to go in the middle of the actual disconnector so we can move that around until it fits and there you go wazam so now if we pull you can see you can see right now that triggers in we got the pen going the um, selector switch is working correctly it's a good thing to check on uh, and then you can see that when we go into full auto that we actually pull the disconnector down so we're all good to go there sweet so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the hammer in and for the hammer we're gonna drop into the well here and then we're going to kind of push the hammer down now you can sometimes get the hammer to rest on some of the pieces but it doesn't matter too much you just want to make sure you're pushing down into the right and again we line the holes up and we're going to drop our pin in here we have to jiggle it a bit again right a little bit and you can take Oops, I tore my glove. Let's see what happens there. Maybe that's an issue. Whoops, well, we can take care of that later. So, maybe that'll keep the pen from pivoting. <laughs> cool, so now we have the hammer in. So we can see that the hammer holds, we can fire, and look, our disconnector slips again. Now you want to make sure that you go into the full auto range here. You want to make sure that the disconnector is not actually grabbing while you have the trigger down. Of course, when you let go of the trigger, you do want it to hold on, but you want to make sure that you have that installed correctly. And then, of course, you want to make sure that when the hammer is back, that you can't pull the trigger. Notice I have my finger here. It's important. You don't want to drop your hammer into your body on your $20,000-plus lower. So, everything's working here. We're going to lock the hammer back and just put the safety on so we don't screw anything up. So next up, we're going to install the auto sear mechanism. This is the part, the buffer hits that releases the bolt. Doing this is interesting. You actually have to fold this spring down like that and then insert it over the safety, or the selector switch rather. So what I usually do is I take this guy and I get it lined up the spring this piano spring wire that I'm pointing to right here goes onto the forward side of the selector switch but the actual metal piece for the selector goes on the back side so going into the safe mode actually makes it easier because the slot on the very left side of the selector is optimally placed as, as optimally placed as it can be so what I do is I just start rotating around and you want to pick up just enough to where the actual sear mechanism starts to grab now on this side do you want to put the pin in from the left side you can do it from both but it's just easier this way because you'll only catch one of the two teeth on the piano wire that holds it in so we're going to drop this guy in. Now you can see we're, we're resting on that piano wire right there. So what you want to do is take a really nice punch. And you just want to kind of pull it forward. 
until we skip past the index point. And then you, of course, want to make sure that you have fallen into index because you don't want this pen walking out. And you push on it and it doesn't move. So now we have the auto sear connected, which means that when we pull this hammer back, it should fall onto our auto sear. And then when you push this, it should let go. And then, of course, in the semi auto mode, we pull that guy out of the way and we're only resting on that first part I showed you notice that the auto sear is out of the way completely and then of course you want to make sure that with the safety on still the gun doesn't fire so now we're good there we have the whole trigger in I've got the safe on so that I can't drop the hammer um, next up we'll be adding the mag release parts so the mag release right here this piece goes all the way through and from here this edge is grabbing a slot on the magazine. So what we'll do is we'll just drop this guy in, like so. See, it kind of sticks up. And then we have a spring. We're gonna drop our spring in, like so. And then we screw this guy in. And getting this guy all the way on is actually interesting because you have to, after a certain number of turns, once the gap here goes away, you actually need to push this all the way in and then come over to the other side and grab here and just pull and twist. Keep your thumb on the other side because otherwise you'll muck up your gun. You can always rest. I'm catching my glove again. You can always rest on the top of your... Sick. You can always rest on the top of the bolt catch, because that part you can replace. That's not part of the registered firearm. Um, you'll get far enough in. Uh, you want to make it to where when you push this guy out, the gap that shows up right here is not past this, this last little piece, because otherwise when you push it, this, this piece can move clockwise or counterclockwise and come out, so that's about as far in as you need it. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our buffer tube. Um, so this is again the M4 type uh, buffer tube on this M16, which is not actually correct, but that's what I prefer. So we're going to take and put our buffer piece on here on the bottom. Now what this does, oops, the first thing we need to do that I forgot, we need to actually screw a nut on here. This is what's going to snug us up against the back of that M16 lower. So then we just slide this guy back on. Now there's one piece we need to put in first. The rear takedown pin here. Just kind of drop that in. And then there's another index so that the pin doesn't fall out when you take the lower down. And then there's a spring you got to throw in. The spring can be annoying because as you're twisting this guy around, this piece can start to hit it. So I'll usually actually just take it out, like so, and then I'll start screwing in here. So just screw in. So when do you stop screwing in? Well, you want to stop screwing in as soon as the nut on the inside hits that hole right there. So I got maybe one more turn. See the hole right here? You got a piece that drops in there. So. That's probably fine, and you could say turn one more and be like, oh wow, yeah, that's way too much. This piece has to fall in there. So we'll back out one, maybe two turns, and then we have these two pieces. This just holds your buffer tube in. It's, you don't actually need it for the gun to work, but it just makes it really annoying to assemble the upper and the lower. So what we'll do is we'll come in here, get the glove nice and tight. And we're going to just push that down and screw this guy in one time. You'll notice we're catching on the lip there. And then we kind of need to overturn here. Drop our screw in, or our spring in rather, sorry. And then you can take a, you know, a flathead screwdriver or something. Just kind of push it in there long enough to drop over like so. And then tighten this guy down. Like so, we're going to screw down here. Before you tighten too much, you do want to make sure that you are level. This piece on the bottom right here 
should make you pretty level, but if you get it wrong, then your um, stock is going to not be in line with the rest of the gun. So I'll usually just turn it up. I know this is kind of an extreme angle. I'll usually just turn this up and make sure that it's nice in the exact right spot. Like so, maybe. It's not perfect unless 